I just got back from Mendocino. I found a fantastic selection of really diverse mushrooms. Most of these are edible, but not all of them. So I'm going to run you guys through everything that's here on the board. Starting with these really big, chunky boletes at the back. These are Lexinums. This is probably Lexinum manzanite, the manzanita bolete. And their scaber stalks is the common name for these mushrooms because they have little black scabers all over the stem. Kind of like a whitish pore surface that doesn't really stain. And like coppery to dark brown tops. And they're just super fucking solid. I love these mushrooms. But if you do eat them, you should cook them really well because they can be toxic raw. Next, we have the classic porcini, Boletus edulis. This is the porcino, little piggies they call them because they have a fat bottom, a nice copper top. Here in California, you find these under pine. Sometimes you can find them under oak. They are often in association or growing near Amanita muscaria. So if you see muscaria, keep an eye out for porcini. These are delicious, edible, sweet, nutty mushrooms. When you cook them up, you can also eat them raw. Uh, and they're, they're definitely one of the most sought after awesome mushrooms that people want to hunt for in the fall. You know, when they're, they're little, they just look like a little button like this. And as they get bigger, their uh, pores turn more brown and the stem gets longer. It's not quite as fat, but this is kind of like the perfect stage to get them in. Uh, next, we have some Gumphus clavatus, the pig's ear. So this is called a lilac chanterelle sometimes. It's not a true chanterelle. Uh, it's actually in Gonfales, so it's related to Romeria, but has a beautiful kind of purple color and these like decurrent ridges that run down the stem. Uh, let's see, we have a big old pretty purple cortinarius here. Someone had picked this, so we decided just to bring it home, but it has like a cortina and kind of like brown orangey gill or brown orangey spores and these kind of like purpley gills um super solid not edible smells like an ashtray but it's a cool mushroom anyhow uh, brought home this gorgeous sample of red romeria romeria aria spora these are really really cool they're actually not poisonous as you might assume they are edible um they make the juice around them red when they cook so they're pretty cool but i love love these because they're just so vibrant uh we have the classic Amanita muscaria, the Mario mushroom. Uh, this is trippy, edible, and toxic all at the same time. If you eat it raw, you'll get poisoned by ibotenic acid. If you cook it at uh, high temperature and low pH, you will convert that ibotenic acid into muscamol, which is an entheogenic substance. And when you make a tea out of it, it helps you get sleepy. Uh, it doesn't really make you trip. It has alcohol-like effects, and then it like is a depressant. And it's a GABA agonist, and so it just makes you like kind of delirious and sleepy. That's all. People always want to know. It's not like psilocybin, it's, but it is fully legal. So you can buy this in stores and try it out if you want. But I'm going to time lapse these buttons and then dry some out and put them on my Christmas tree. Uh, next, we have this is a rustla, shrimp rustla, brittle gill. Uh, this is a midnight entoloma, entoloma medianox. Those are both edible. We have some swillus, other kinds of boletes, um, different caps and you know pores, but they're usually yellow pores. Uh, we have another kind of big Amanita here. It's Amanita calyptroderma. This one's edible. You don't need to specially process it. You can just eat it, but you always want to look for striations on the edge of the cap. Usually has a thick white skull cap on top, kind of creamy gills instead of pure white gills, not much of a partial veil, and it has a sac-like vulva, which is this sort of piece at the bottom, sac-like vulva, not a vulva. It's called a vulva. There you go. Um, whereas the muscaria has like a big fatty vulva. That's not a sac. It's just a big fatty base, right? Um, we have another, this is actually another similar, uh, grisette amanita. This one is also edible, but has a thick white skull cap and those striations on the edge of the cap. Uh, we have a sort of a false chanterelle and a real chanterelle. So this is turbinellus flaccosus and it is, um, toxic mildly. So some people eat in like India and Mexico, but that red part is where a lot of the organic acid, that's, acid that screws with your kidney is located. Um, these are pretty meaty and solid, but people don't normally collect them, whereas people do collect chanterelles. So we have Cantharella subalbitus, the white chanterelle, and Cantharella formosus, the yellow chanterelle. So these are two of my favorite chanterelle species to find out on the coast this time of year. This one's a meaty and a little bit better than this one, but they're both, they're both delicious. Um, this is probably the thing I was most excited about finding on this whole trip. This is the almond agaric. Uh, this is agaricus smithii. It's related to the prince uh, agar agar agaricus augustus, but the agaricus augustus is a little more brown. This one's a little bit more light colored. So I'm really, really excited to cook this up and eat it because it tastes like almonds. Uh, it's beautiful. 
And then we got a, a zero camellus spolete, so red stem, yellow pores, kind of velvety top. Uh, I got a little tricholoma uh, esquitare group. So this is what's known as man on horseback. It's an edible yellow um, tricholoma, sort of similar to a matsotake. And then lastly, we have a couple of uh, Fomatopsis pinacola, the red belted conch. And we just took these to make it a little bit of art on them, but beautiful like red band there and white pore surface. Some people use these medicinally, but not many. So that is all the mushrooms we got from Mendocino.